And welcome back. So we are working on our 57 Chevrolet 4400 ton and a half truck. Uh, I am currently installing the disc brake conversion on the front of this. Um, I went ahead and we got a power steering conversion and a disc brake conversion. Now, the biggest thing to realize about this is that all of these kits are designed for half ton trucks. Um, and both of these kits are classic performance parts or CPP uh, kits. Now, CPP says that these kits absolutely will not work on the big bolts, ton and a half, uh, I imagine three quarter ton, two ton, whatever, whatever you name it. But I was determined to get a power steering and power brake solution for this vehicle that didn't involve hacking together 50 and 60 year old junkyard parts and I just couldn't believe that they were that different. So uh, what we have here is actually a whole half ton front axle and leaf spring assembly bolted right up to the ton and a half 4400 frame. If you look in your 57 shot manual, all the measurements are identical as far as spring eye length width, everything. It's a direct bolt in. Um, <clears throat> so that solves that problem. Uh, that means that your drag link and your um, tie rod ends and everything else bolt right up. This is a upgraded Chevy Duty um, tie rod. And then these are the modern tie rod ends with ball joints, modern ball joints. And then this is the same thing as a replacement drag link with modern modern ball joint ends. Uh, with greasable zerk fittings and all that stuff. This is a direct, direct swap. Uh, the parts are dirt cheap. I think that tie rod and tie rod and assembly cost me like $150. And then this uh, replacement drag link was like 50 bucks or 40 bucks or something like that. Um, and it's it all just literally bolts right up. Simple install. Didn't even make a video on how to do it because if you can take the old parts off, the new parts just go right in its place. Uh, uh, what we're working on right now is the disc brake kit, and I stopped to take this video because I had an issue while installing it. First and foremost, the instructions that come with this are terrible. I have about $1,400 invested in the disc brake conversion and the power steering conversion, and this is what they send for instructions. One eight and a half by eleven, not even double sided sheet of paper that's been photocopied three hundred times with pictures that you can't even actually it looks it looks great on the on the camera. <laughs> well, maybe I should have used that to look at it, but pictures that you can't even see and half the steps aren't even in here. It tells it doesn't tell you how any of it goes together, which bolts to use where what the assembly order is, I is this is as good as kindling um, and it's honestly a joke i think companies need to do better especially to support the hot rodding community and the guy who's trying to do it in his garage um, there's there's no excuse for this it would cost five dollars to put together a nice color booklet with instructions on how to do this stuff do better so one thing I wanted to note is on this is that if you are doing this and you have this issue uh, and you are trying to figure out how to put this together is that the bolts that come in the kit for with the new caliper bracket replace your factory backing plate bolts as well as the spacers that are on there from your drum brake hardware. So you can pretty much toss all that. There's no need to take it apart. Um, even though it talks about doing it in these instructions. What you want to do is, the problem is there's there's three different size bolts. The short ones go up top on your caliper bracket, right here, left and right. Also, your caliper bracket, make sure the indent faces inward on either side. Uh, you can reverse this, and you can have this turned backwards. Once again, the instructions say nothing about the orientation. These, bra these caliper brackets aren't stamped left or right. So it's something you need to pay attention to when you're putting this on. The next second, there's another size bolt in the middle. It's the medium length bolt. That goes right here. 
that attaches the left side of the control arm to the spindle. And this is the one that goes through on its own. The copper bracket doesn't go through here. You can use this to hang your front suspension parts while you put this on, actually. Uh, finally, the longest bolt goes on the right side lower. This sandwiches the copper bracket, the spindle, and your control arm, and then your nut. Now, once you have this point, you're ready to start assembling the brakes. Clean this spindle up as best you can. Use a piece of emery cloth, something like that. Um, some high grit wet sandpaper. Uh, clean this up a little bit, polish it nice and good. Get some grease on it. When you get your kit, you're going to want to pull your rotor out. Lay your rotor on the floor like this or work table, it doesn't make a difference. I bought the upgraded billet hub assembly for this assembly. You can buy this without these hub assemblies. If you buy this hub assembly, it's like $210 for the hubs and you get the tapered roller, roller bearing upgrade. Um, it was worth that to me to not have to cut the old drums and hubs apart and knock out bearing races and all that other stuff. Um, so I decided that it would be much better spring for new hubs with my kit. I bought the nicest kit they had. Uh, if you, the other thing is like there's there's absolutely no information on installing these hubs. Nothing in their tech library. Nothing in the instructions. Nothing I could find on YouTube, which is why I'm making this video. If you don't have the hub kit then you're going to have to cut your hubs out of your old drum brake assembly and put new races in it and all that fun stuff. But the assembly process is the same. You take your hub, either the new one or the old one, you set it down on top of your rotor like so, and you clock it to where this, this, the wheel studs can come through. You take this spacer, you can see it's countersunk there, you lay that, and you clock that with the small holes, just like so. It comes with these bolts. There's three per side. And these lock everything together. When I went to put this together, you can see it doesn't fit. If we pull our spacer off, pull our hub off and look at it the hole in the hub is too small for the bolts they provide they fit great in the spacer and they thread into the rotor just fine but they do not fit in the holes in the hub so now I'm going to have to drill my brand new billet hubs apart and fix what the factory couldn't provide to me to begin with. Once again, $1,400, try to buy the nice parts, and you still can't get good stuff. And we're back. So, as you can see, we've uh, made some progress on this here. I've gone ahead and I went ahead and took these, took the hub off and, and uh, drilled out the holes in the hub for these three bolts here. Um, I sized them up one size to match the uh, shaft size of the bolt and then I took a half inch drill bit and cut a little bit into the hub to basically act as a countersink because um, these are these are countersunk head bolts and the bottom of the, of the bolt will hit the hub and it won't allow you to tighten all the way up so you need to give it a relief cut this a little bit on top of drilling the holes out so not only were the holes drilled the wrong size there was no reliefs cut into it or they weren't countersunk so these this whole plate could sandwich together um went ahead and did that i did con reach out and contact the company to let them know the issues that i was having nobody responded to me nobody contacted me back 
Uh, it's just been absolutely piss poor customer service from uh, classic performance parts on this whole this whole setup that they make. Um, and we're going to get into a little more of that here in a minute. Uh, just went ahead and put this on. Put the once this is all on, I press the, the wheel studs in. Uh, I do have a hydraulic press. I did find it actually easier to go ahead and just put a socket on the floor and hammer these in by hand. Um, they went together a lot nicer. Bolted it all together, slid it on the spindle, and then realized that the spacing was wrong and that the disc was hitting the back of this caliper bracket. And if you have this issue and you're wondering what's going on, it's because this comes in the kit however there is absolutely zero mention of it in any of the instructions or directions or anything it's not even in the picture um i had assumed that it, it was for the old drum brake hubs you had to use it for the bearing race or something um <clears throat> but turns out you have to take this and slide it over the spindle in the back and that takes up the spacing the difference between the new roller bearing and the new hub and then it all goes together just fine so once you slide that in place bolt your caliper on with your um, uh, brake pads and everything put your washer in that comes in the kit your new castle nut your new cotter pin and then it comes also comes with these dust caps. So you pack these full of grease, put it on, hammer it in place, and call that good. Um, I don't have anything else plumbed in yet. I have to do some cleanup on the frame. I'm putting a brand new uh, powered power brake booster and master cylinder and everything in the factory location and I will make a, another video for when I start routing all that because I got to route lines and um, I did upgrade to stainless hard lines for this but for right now the goal was to get this all together so I can put wheels and tires back on it so I can drop it down on the ground and get this off of my rack for right now because it's been tying it up for a long time and I need to put other spring other stuff in here um, but we're going to go ahead and move on here. I'm going to give you a look at the back side too just so you can see how everything lines up back there. So there's, you can see there's that spacer that comes in the kit that goes against the back of the spindle and then this is the hub, this is the back of the hub right there. There's your, there's your grease seal right there that you have to tap in and then your roller bearing is, is inside of this hub. All in all, a little more complicated than it had to be, especially with the severe lack of instructions that were included and um, <clears throat> the fact that the parts weren't made to fit correctly. Uh, but moving on here, I wanted to show you the rest of this and how I did the rest of this install as well. Because like I said, this is a ton and a half truck. Uh, never really designed to have this type of power steering on it or anything and like I said earlier I was told that none of it would fit or is designed for it but what I did was actually real simple the factory manual box was mounted like right here and right here and then down here somewhere kind of the general area that the half ton box goes in the pitman arm and the drag link are all very similar um, so I went ahead and just took the old steering box off I welded all the holes solid ground and flush I took the new steering box lined it up with the interior mount and I had a friend sit in the cab when he brought the column shaft the steering shaft through the, the firewall and orientated it where it needed to be. I matched the angle up, up and down on the steering box, marked the holes out, took the steering box off, 
and then just drilled three new holes right here, right through the frame. Loosely mounted the steering box up. And I didn't tighten, didn't snug anything down, tighten anything down with it. Loosely mounted the steering box up. Cut the column, the shaft, and this is this is the factory. This is the factory column, uh, and then the factory shaft. Uh, just had to take some of the length off and clearance it in the back for the new rag joint. You can see I just put a, like a 45 degree cut on the back of that um, to clearance it for the shaft going up against the rag joint. Painted it all, and then the next problem was because this out. This exterior, this exterior column was mounted into the old box and it didn't have this rag joint. It's a straight shaft all the way through. Uh, that left this loose up here. So it would flex up and down. It had nothing holding it really in place other than the two bolts in the column and um, that just wasn't gonna do it. So I went ahead and you can see, and I just made, I just cut a piece of sheet metal out to match the hole in the firewall, I hard bolted the interior floor plate in through it instead of the sheet metal screws that it had. I went ahead and welded it all the way to the firewall and then welded that plate directly to the column and now it has absolutely no flex to it. I can rock the whole truck with it. It's now integral to the firewall. The only flex in it now is due to the rubber grommets up top, which is designed for anti-vibration purposes. So if you have one of these ton and a half or two ton trucks, and you're looking for an easy way or um, modern way of putting power steering and power brakes on it, put a half ton axle in it. Put a half ton axle in it, you can buy half ton brakes, which are more than substantial enough for this truck and way better than anything that it came with um you know a lot of people just argue that oh you know it's half ton stuff it's not going to be substantial enough for this it is way better than anything that was on it to begin with um nice roller bearings nice billet hubs plenty of brake and then you can buy the half ton power steering kit that they sell as well your column cuts the same, just like the 3100s do or 3800s. All you have to do that's different is you need to take your old steering box off. You need to weld the holes up where the old holes were. And your new steering box will mount right in the same pad area. I mean, you can see the cutout where the old box is indent in there, where the old box was. Just need a second set of hands. Um, that's really the big thing is finding somebody who can, you know, get in the cab and help you line everything up while you make a template and marks on your frame and drill new holes. But worst case scenario, it's all steel, so you can always you can always re-weld holes, you can always re-drill holes. Um, that's the beauty about working with old steel and old iron is it's always fixable, and it's not hard to make it look nice either. So that brings me pretty much to the end of my tips and tricks and install. I said I haven't seen anybody actually do this to one of these trucks yet or you know, document it uh, at all. And I was having a hard time really finding out how to do it and put the order together. So I figured that if I have some time, I'd shoot some video here. And at, at worst case scenario, if you can watch this and you have a frame of reference of kind of where everything goes that was my other issue I took this apart three or four months ago and um, kind of couldn't remember how everything went back together so uh, you if you could you could even use this video for that just to know the alignment of everything outside of that it's really just a matter of putting all your nuts and bolts back in torquing them down putting your grease fittings in greasing it all up throwing your wheels and tires back on and uh, that's really about it. So join us next time where I'm going to show you how I mount the brake booster and the brake master cylinder up and plumb that in and get the line set and everything else like that. Uh, actually in between that I have to put a I have to put a piece in this floor in here. 
I took the old fuel tank out and it's rotten behind there. So I'm going to go ahead and cut some sheet metal out and put a new piece in there. So that might beat putting the rest of the brake system in. But either way, you're, we're still working on the truck. The truck's still getting getting worked on. We're still making progress on it. It hasn't gone anywhere, I promise. If you like this video, or if this video helped you out, you know, please drop a comment down below. Or if you consider subscribing, I'd really appreciate it as well. That helps. Give it a like. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. You can email us at wheelsforgotten at gmail.com. Um, if you had any troubles doing this or you're looking for some suggestions on how you can go about doing it, it really wasn't that hard outside of the fact of just figuring it out and the fact that the, you know, the, incon the inconvenience of the parts not fitting together and having to modify them. Um, but that's really more or less just hot rodding in general, I guess. So anyway, we'll catch you next time here at Wheels Forgotten.